You are what I'm looking for. Okay, so the first step for this project is to grab a paper trimmer and some chipboard. So the chipboard that I have is eight and a half inches by 11 inches, give or take a little bit. Maybe it might be eight by 10, something in along those lines. So you can use whatever you got. You don't have to use chipboard. If you have an old scrap cardboard box or cereal box, that will work for this project too. You could also cut your chipboard with a ruler and a craft knife, but I like to use this trimmer that has a drop down blade. And what I do is I cut on one side, flip it over and cut on the other side. And then the pieces just separate nice and easily. I keep one little trimmer just for chipboard cutting. So I use a super dull blade. It doesn't have to be the sharpest, but whenever I change out my paper trimmer that I used for cutting cardstock, I replace the blade and put the old blade from the paper into my chipboard trimmer if that makes sense. It's very technical and complicated. So anyways, I'm just going to go along and start cutting my chipboard with that method, cutting on both sides. For my first cut, I cut along the longer side and cut it six inches. And then I flipped it around and I'm going to make cuts at three and a half inches. Okay, so I've made it on three and a half inches on one side, flipped it over and did three and a half inches on the other side so that I can flip it over once more and do three and a half inches on one side and then that piece will separate and then three and a half inches once more and there we have two pieces. And now this little leftover piece here, the skinny piece will be a scrap. We may use that later, we'll come back to that. And now what's left here, I'm going to cut this down to three one eighth inches and I'll flip it over and cut on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece at three and a half inches and then flip it over and cut at three and a half inches again. And now flip to the back side and cut at three and a half inches. So what this is doing is giving me two pieces that measure three and one eighth inch by three and a half inches. Okay, I'm going to go in and grab another piece of chipboard and I'm going to cut one piece along the long side. I'm going to cut it at three inches. Okay, and then once this separates, I'm going to cut this piece down to six and a half inches. This will be the length of our project, basically the size of what we're creating. It's going to be in and around three by six and a half. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to pull everything here together and show you what we've got. So I have a skinnier piece here and that's going to go right in the center. I'm going to mark down all the measurements on these pieces so that you don't have to worry about that. And then we'll walk through the steps on creating this. So the first piece that I have here, this piece is going to be the bottom of our project and it measures three by six and a half inches. Okay, the piece to the left and the piece to the right are the two side walls. Okay, and these both measure the same. They both measure three and a half by six and a half. Okay, the smaller pieces, we're also going to use this to create the sides. And these pieces measure three and a half inches by three and one eighth inch. So it's going to be three and a half inches tall and three and one eighth inch wide to be able to accommodate those other sides. Okay, I'll show you what I mean as we go along. So I'm going to start numbering these. The very center piece, I'm numbering at one. Okay, and this is the order that we're going to glue everything together. So we're going to start with one, and then two and three. That's going to create the sides and the bottom. I've numbered everything, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, I'll freeze the video here so that you can take a screenshot or quickly write down whatever information that you need to collect. I will also have a new template book coming out shortly, which will be chipboard projects. So this project will definitely be in that new template book. So keep an eye out for that. So the next thing we're going to do is cut some little cardstock binding. So I keep all of my cardstock in 
little sleeves and I keep all of the scraps together for projects just like this. So I need a couple of pieces with various different measurements and I'm just going to cut them and write them down on the papers. So I need two pieces that measure one by five and a half, two pieces that measure one by two and three quarters, and then I need four pieces that measure one by four. Now, shortly, I'm going to cut this piece down to one by three, but I'm going to need that little extra piece that I cut off. So you'll see what I mean in just a moment. All right, so I've got all of these pieces labeled, and then I'm going to take my scoreboard and score them all in half. I had one that was just a little bit short of one inch, but I figured I'll use it up anyways rather than waste it. So I'm just scoring these all down the center at half an inch. So all the pieces that we have, the two long pieces, the two short pieces, and the four middle pieces. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to attach all of our chipboard together with these pieces. Okay, so we're going to start with pieces one, two, and three. Okay, so first we're going to take number one and put it in the center, and then we'll have two and three on the left and right. And we're going to use the little binding pieces in order to stand the two and three piece up. So we're going to attach those two long pieces. They're one by five and a half inches. I'm going to attach them both down to the bottom piece, number one. So I'm going to fold them in half and apply glue to one side. And then I'm going to line these up so that right against the edge of that chipboard. So once we line this up on the edge of that chipboard and the pieces standing up, we'll be able to attach number two or three to the sides. So I'm just using liquid glue here, and I'll take my time to line these pieces up. At the end of this project, all of this will be covered and you won't see it. So it doesn't matter if it's not perfectly straight or perfectly in the center, but try to get those pieces lined up to the edge as best as possible. Okay, and then I'm gonna apply my adhesive onto the little pieces that are left here. And then I'm going to stand up my little sides and attach these little strips to the side pieces. I went a little bit backwards here and I attached number three instead of number two. But these are both identical pieces, so no biggie. Okay, so I'm just taking my time to make sure that that chipboard is lined up with the bottom piece. And then pressing in my little binding strip. And I'll use my bone folder to press in that adhesive and make sure it's nice and secure. Okay, looking good so far. This is where I realized I had cut this piece too long and I didn't want to dwell on it too much. I thought I'm just going to set it aside and I'll come back to it and figure it out. So I'm going to take those two smaller pieces and attach them to both pieces four and five. So across the three and one eighth inch piece, I'm gluing down the strips that measure one by two and three quarters. And I'm just lining them up into the center of this piece of chipboard as best as I can. And once again, getting right to the edge of the bottom, making sure that my little binding strip is lined up with the edge of the chipboard. And then once those are all set, I'm going to apply adhesive to that little strip and attach them to number one, to the bottom piece of our little box here. Okay, and I'm just gonna hold it in place, making sure that everything fits nicely and I'll do the same to the other side. Now these pieces are 1 8th of an inch wider than the bottom base to accommodate for the two side pieces of chipboard so that when everything folds together, it's gonna to be nice and clean. All right, we're gonna move over to those pieces that measure one by four. And what I'm gonna do is pop them back into my trimmer and cut off one inch. So I'm going to make this one by three inches, but I'm going to keep those little pieces that I cut off. We're going to use those as well. So I'm going to go ahead and fold these little strips. I'm going to fold them in half. And then rather than gluing on the inside like we had done for the bottom of the box, we're going to apply the glue into the little crease of that fold and apply these strips to the outside of the box and making sure that those corners line up with the eighth of an inch piece going over top of the sides, if that makes sense. You'll see what I mean when you're putting this all together. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for all four strips. I'm gonna fold all of these pieces in half, 
and put the glue inside rather than on the outside like we had for the other strips. So I'm going to put it inside that little cavity and then line up my corners and create nice 90 degree angles and apply those strips down. Okay, and I made sure that I brought the strips to the very, very top so that there was strength in the corners here. So I'm not too worried that they don't go all the way down to the bottom. This is perfectly okay. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is take those little one inch strips that we had left over, fold them in half and apply my adhesive, and then reinforce that corner. So I'm tucking it on the inside at the top. So then we have nice strong corners all the way around and it's held together nice and secure. All right, making sure that everything is lined up nicely and I'm gonna apply all four of those little pieces into each of the corners. And then there we go, the bottom part of our project is complete. It's nice and sturdy and it's gonna hold up well. And then once we decorate it, it's gonna be oh so gorgeous. All right, let's move along to the lid for this project. This lid is super simple and super easy. You're gonna really love how quickly this comes together. So I grabbed another piece of chipboard and I'm gonna cut this down to seven and a quarter inches and then I'll flip it over and cut again to separate that piece. And then I'm gonna turn it and cut it down to nine and three quarters. And again, flip it over and separate that little piece. Okay. And I'm gonna put it back in my trimmer and I'm gonna cut at two inches on all four sides. But this time, I'm only gonna cut on one side of the chipboard. I'm not gonna flip it over and cut again. And you'll see why in just a moment. So I'm cutting at two inches on all four sides, okay? And now I'm just gonna write the measurements here. So you're seven and a quarter by nine and three quarters. And this is going to be the lid of our box. I had wrote the wrong measurement on the lid, so it says 10 and 3 quarters, but it's not. It should be 9 and 3 quarters, okay? Now, I'm outlining these four corners here, and these parts we're going to cut away. I'm going to fold the piece on the cut line just to kind of help separate that chipboard and create a crease. And I'm going to cut away the corners. I'm just going to take my time and cut away all four corners, making sure that I follow along the cut line. So basically, all of the chipboard will be intact. The pieces that I'm cutting, I'm cutting away, but the rest of it is gonna stay together. But because we only cut on one side, the back part of the chipboard is still attached, and we can just kind of fold it and create the sides of our lid that will go over top of the bottom of the box. So I'm going to do that to all four pieces. <laughs> that is my puppy trying to participate in my voiceover. All right, so once all of these pieces are cut away, this is what we're going to have. And I'm going to kind of gently fold the rest of those cut lines. And then there we go. That's all there is to creating this lid. The last thing that we're going to need are just a couple of binding strips to glue everything together. So I just went back to my scraps and I cut up a few pieces. It doesn't really matter the size. I've got about one and a half inches by one inch and I'm just gonna score them in half. Okay, and so I've got four of those and I'm going to do the same thing as I had for the bottom of the box. I'm going to fold them and apply glue on the inside of the little binding strip and then adhere it to the outside of the lid. This way there's no cardstock catching when I'm trying to put this on top of my box and open and close it. I find that there's no interference when I put the binding on the outside here. Okay, so I'm going to do that to all four sides and get all of these pieces glued down, applying that adhesive to the little folded corners and securing everything into place. And then once that's done, we have our lid that fits perfectly on top of our box. So now this is nice and sturdy and good and strong and we're ready to rock and roll and turn this into something fabulous. Once this is all decorated, I plan on putting some little stoppers on the sides so that the lid doesn't go all the way down and so that the little things that I put inside of this box have room to breathe. Here comes the best part, decorating the box. 
Okay, to decorate this project, I'm going to use the 49 and Market Color Swatch Eucalyptus Collection. So I've shared this in a previous video and I'll link it down below and on screen as well. And this is a beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, soft, dreamy palette. And I'm gonna use all of the pieces to create my project. So I'm just gonna select one of those beautiful 12 by 12 papers and I'm just gonna measure my box to make sure that I'm cutting up the right size paper. So I'm gonna cut this down to three and a half inches. As a matter of fact, I think it's just a little hair past three and a half inches. I wanted to make sure that I covered all of that chipboard. So I've got two pieces that are cut down to 12 by three and a half and a little smidge. And I'm just gonna wrap it around the outside of the box. Okay, so I just kind of lined it up and centered it as best as I could. And I'm going to add adhesive. I really liked this pattern on the back side. I almost changed my mind. But I decided to keep going. I'm gonna add my liquid glue to the center panel here and get that glued to the outside of the box. And I'll just press all that adhesive in. And I just want to make sure that everything is nice and straight and it's all the way to the bottom. If it hangs over the top just a little bit, that's not going to matter. It's not a big deal as long as it's flush with the bottom. Okay, and then I'm going to apply the adhesive to the little side tabs to adhere the cardstock down. And I'll do that to both ends. And then I'm going to take the next piece and I'm going to line that up. And I'm not exactly sure what I was thinking here. Um, I ended up folding it a little bit weird and I'm going to try to fix it later on. I'll try to come back and decorate the sides so that you can't really tell. What I did like was the way that the pattern went all the way to the edge on one side, but I didn't like how it was sort of halfway on the other, but no big deal. We'll work around that. So I've got all of this glued down and adhered into place. I'm taking care to make sure that all of that paper is glued right down because when I put my lid on here, I don't want it to catch and sort of rip the paper or anything. So I wanna make sure that it's nice and glued down and that this is gonna slide in perfectly. And there we go. Beautiful. We'll come back and cover that bottom later on. But for now, let's move on to the lid and let's get that covered with the remaining piece that I have left over here. First, I'm going to remove that branding strip off of the paper, and I'm gonna save that because there's a pretty pattern on the back. And then I'm just gonna kinda put this up against the lid of my box and kinda determine how big I need it to be. So this is going to be eight and a quarter. So however big this paper is, it's just whatever's left over, and I just cut it down to eight and a quarter. So I'm just gonna line the lid up just eyeballing and getting it lined up to the center of this little piece of paper and I'm gonna mark some areas so I know where to score so that I can fold those little tiny flaps over the sides of the box. So I'm gonna pop this into my score tool and I'm just scoring based on the lid of the box. There are no specific measurements exactly for this because everyone's box could be just a little bit different. So I would advise you to do the same thing that I'm doing. Just take that lid, line it up to the center of the cardstock and just eyeball it. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we can always cover up any errors. So I'm gonna go ahead and score all of those lines. And then once the scores are identified, I'm gonna cut away the four corners the same way when we were creating the box out of chipboard. So exact same style, I'm cutting away the four corners and I'm just following along the score lines. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. I do make a few mistakes along the way and I leave those in the video for you and then I also show you how to fix them. So I'm going ahead and cutting away all four of these little corners here. And then once that's done, I'm going to line it up over the top of my box to make sure everything fits together nicely. Okay, looks good. I'm just gonna fold down those score lines and just help guide them over the sides of my box to make sure that the paper is folded the way I want it to be. And then I'll grab my liquid glue and cover the top of the lid with adhesive. So I'm not gonna worry about the sides right away. I'm just gonna focus on the top to make sure that I get my pattern nice and straight and lined up where I want it. 
and then I can glue the sides down afterwards. So I'm just pressing in all that adhesive, making sure it's nice and adhered, and now we'll work on those little side flaps. I'm going to apply my liquid glue all down the strip and even in the crease of the, even right in the little crease where the chipboard is, I'll add a little bit of extra adhesive there. And then I'll just press it all in and I don't care if the adhesive oozes out, I just wipe it away with my finger and wipe it back onto the chipboard or whatever. This glue is gonna dry super clear, plus we're going to embellish the box so it's really not going to make a huge difference. So I'm just applying all those strips in. I'm going to do that to all four sides, pressing in my adhesive, making sure everything is nice and tight and adhered down well. And now here you can see on the corners, there are a few little gaps, just slight little gaps. And I'm not going to worry about that. I can always come back and work on that later on and figure out a way to cover that up. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to grab another piece of that gorgeous paper from the collection and I'm going to cut a couple of strips to wrap around the rest of the lid. So I'm just going to measure and I need about approximately one and a quarter inch all the way around. I do take my ruler and measure all four sides because I did eyeball measure the center of the paper. So it's very likely that all four pieces are not the same measurement all the way around. So I just want to make sure that I get my pattern paper covering all of that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this paper down. This paper happens to be the cover sheet, which also has this gorgeous blue distressed pattern. And then when I cut it, I realized I really liked the strips that I got out of it. So I decided to switch it up and use those strips on the side instead. I liked the sort of the lines and the separate images. I think it just adds a little bit of interest and it wasn't my intention, but I really liked the result here. So I'm just lining that up and applying those strips all the way around. Now I do want to avoid any weird spots where it would finish. I want to make sure it goes end to end. So I cut off any extra pieces that might hang over or fold over the other side of the pretty patterns. So I'll cut it right to the edge so that you can't really see the seam. So I'll apply my adhesive and glue down the last piece. Now here you'll see I do have a slight gap. I have a little slight area where the chipboard and some of those binding strips are showing through. And I'm gonna fix this very easily. So I'm just rubbing in all the adhesive, make sure that all of my cardstock is pressed in nice and good and trim off any of the excess that might be poking out because I don't want it to catch on anything and rip the cardstock off. So here I decided to grab some twine. I have this cute little jar of twine that I actually made for my wedding. We used this jar of twine with a message in a bottle. So instead of a guest book at my wedding, we had a big old fashioned jug and, and we had guests write little messages and tie them up with the twine and drop it into the bottle. It was really cool and I've had this little twine sitting on my desk and I've used it for so many things and I, I created the little jar with a pair of scissors attached so that I can easily snip away the twine. So while I was yakking away here, I've wrapped the twine all the way around the box several times. So and I've just sort of hooked it on to the corners and then went up and over and around with, you know, no specific pattern. I just kind of made it random. And then I'm going to tie a cute little bow right in the front center. I'll snip away the tails. And then I found that this knot wasn't tightening. So I grabbed a little bit of my glue. I applied some glue right behind where the knot is. And then I'm going to grab my reverse tweezers and pinch and hold that little bow until it dries and it's nice and solid. And then none of this is going to come off. I really like that result. That was a quick and easy fix to that little gap of paper. We still have a couple of more gaps around the lid on the corners, but we'll work on that another day. So I'm going to stop this video here. I think that you've had enough for one day and 
uh, when we come back next time, we'll work on decorating the inside of the box and then creating the beautiful things that are going to go inside of it. I'm so excited to continue working on this project. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. Coming up on screen is a playlist for some of the gorgeous collections that I've been working with lately. Have yourself a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!